What's going on guys? Today we are going to go over how to set up your first deep dive. So go over a quick couple of things. Of course you can see that I have my Anki open up here and then I got a couple of sites open up here. Um, so basically the first thing you really want to do as we go over in this list, and this list might have been updated since now, but it'd still be helpful I'm sure in the future. First thing you want to do is just pick a show, right? Um, we suggest slice of life shows to start. Um, I know that Torador is pretty popular, Shirakuma Cafe, um, Umarachan, a couple of other things too. Um, but once you've picked your show, you're basically wanting to get uh, some subtitles, right? And you have two really good options to go about this. You can either use this website right here, which is already a compiled website of subtitles, uh, kitsuneko.net, right? Uh, and it's got a really good list of subtitles in here. However, I don't always trust the quality of these subtitles, um, so what I personally like to do is go straight to the source to get subtitles. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on this VPN, this is Urban VPN, um, and just set my location to Japan. Um, sometimes this works right away and sometimes it doesn't, you might have to use it a couple times. And then I'm just going to go to Netflix. Cool. And then once you're in Netflix, you can pick any show that you would like, and you can go ahead and download subtitles from it using uh, a couple of different add-ons. So, let this load up. So basically, I have this add-on added in right here, right? Um, it allows me to download the subtitles from different shows, and that add-on is called Subadub. Uh, I believe it's available for both Chrome and Firefox, but um, I tend to use it inside Chrome for another reason. You'll see that I have this other add-on right here. This is called Learning Language with Netflix, and sometimes Subadump doesn't work well unless you have Learning Language with Netflix set up for it. Right? It's a really uh, Learning Language with Netflix is really cool because it allows you to be able to see the subtitles down here and get a pop-up English dictionary with it, which is cool if you're trying to immerse on Netflix. Uh, if you already have a Netflix account, that's great. But what you can do though is once you have uh, the show that you want, um, and if you can find it on Netflix, you can basically go in here, make sure that you have the right subtitle file selected, you got Japanese right there, and then you can just hit download SRT, right? And as you can see, that just immediately downloaded the subtitle file. Cool. So once you've done that and you've selected what subtitles you want um, and what show you want, uh, you can go ahead and actually start setting up your deep dive, right? Step three, set up your deep dive, right? Easy day. So if you go into um, your Anki, you can go ahead and hit either Control A, which will bring up the Morphman uh, Readability Analyzer, or you can go down to Tools, and then you can go to Morphman and do the same exact thing by going to Readability Analyzer. So this is the Morphman Readability Analyzer. It's a pretty easy tool to use once you learn it, um, and you kind of understand how things work. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to want to go ahead and select your input directory file and you're going to go ahead and select the subtitles that you want. Now I really, really suggest that you have it set up in a way that makes sense for um, the show that you're watching, right? So if you want to do a, a deep dive on, I don't know, Gretzko or anything else, basically you want to make sure that your video files and your subtitle files are in two separate folders. Now, that is to help out with the uh, parsing. Um, if you have your video files and subtitle files in the same folder, it could mess up uh, Morphman and it might not run. So basically what you'll do is you'll select the show that you want, right? And you're not gonna see any files pop up because it's selecting the entire folder. From there, you're gonna go ahead and make sure that your Morphomizer is set to Japanese, unless you're doing another language, of course. Um, but I believe most of the people here are set to Japanese. Then you have a couple of options here, right? We got the minimum master frequency, and we have the um, target percentage. Um, I'm gonna go over real quick what these mean because these are the two things that can really affect your deep dive the most. So the minimum master frequency list, if we go into and we open up our frequency list here, right, um, should be, so let me go ahead and open up a spreadsheet. Go ahead and copy this file path file open, and then I'm going to go ahead and type this file path into here and bring up that frequency list. And this is the main frequency list that I've been using, the Netflix Unidic uh, No Names Frequency Report. Go ahead and open that up. It's going to come up like a CSV file. And um, I wanted to show you guys this directly just so I can clear up a little bit of the confusion. So say you wanted to limit your studying to the top 
15,000, 10,000, 5,000 words in Japanese, depending on how far you are along, right? Because you thought that those might be the most helpful for you. Well, this is the way you can do that. So basically, you have a couple of different options here, right? Um, the minimum master frequency list is going to select what position on the frequency list you want to limit your deep dive to. If you set this to zero, it's going to say, I can use all of this, the entire frequency list. But if you set it to, uh, what is that? 5,100,001, 316, your entire frequency list will only be limited to the first word or particle in this case, da. Right? So what you can do is say you want to learn the 10,000 most common word, you can go ahead and scroll to 10,000 on whatever frequency list you're using. Right? Looks like it's right here. And the number that you would limit your frequency list to is 490. Now this is this saying that um, this word has showed up at least 490 times. Um, on this frequency list when it was doing its compiling, right? So basically what I could do is say, okay, I want to limit my um, frequency list to the 490th most common, or the 10,000th most common word that shows up 490 times. Cool, and then you're going to go ahead and limit your target percentage. Target percentage, what you're doing here is you are trying to say, I want to learn this percentage of the show. Generally speaking, when we're talking about um, your first deep dive, we generally say to go between 90 and 95%. The higher you set that number, the longer you're going to be diving that show. So say I wanted to learn the show to 95%. Cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and select our frequency list next. right? We have our master frequency list here. Um, and that should just be saved inside of your um, database folder for Anki, for Morphmap. If you go over to the uh, website, you can go over here and go to resources. And of course, this might have been updated by now too. But in this somewhere, I promise you, there will be a frequency list um, listed. And there are two right here. We have the Netflix uh, Unidic frequency list without names and with names. I personally like using the without names one. But if you want to study people's names as well, then you can go ahead and throw them in there. And you can go ahead and just download either one of those and then go ahead and drop it in your database folder. So after that, you're going to go and select whatever frequency list you want to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the without names, right? And then these two options should already be selected, right? You have your known database um, and then where it's going to output this information that it's creating for you. Um, if it's not selected, all you have to do is navigate to your, um, your proper folder where you keep all of your database files for Morphman. Go ahead and click on known and then go ahead and click on open. And then uh, same thing, just go to the database folder and then uh, output it there, right? After that, you're pretty much set up for everything you want to do. Um, so in this situation, I've limited myself to the 10,000 most common Japanese words, and I've limited it to a goal of getting to 95% uh, understanding on each episode. So I'm going to go ahead and hit analyze. Great, and it's going to um, output a bunch of different things for me. So we've got an output log, which is like the old school way that you would see how Morphman output things. You have a readability report, um, which can help you determine uh, your readability for each episode that you've been studying, um, that you're looking at. And then you also have your study plan. Um, cool. So, oh, I'm still set to new game. We were supposed to be doing a Gretzko. Sorry about that, guys. Select folder. Go ahead and run that again. So this would be my study plan for this show if I were to if I were to deep dive it, right? So it's going to tell me, and um, so I, I've been studying for a little bit of time. So 95% was probably a little bit a low of a number for me, and this is a great way to tell um, where your percentages should be at for a show. You basically want to determine, you know, how many words you want to learn from that show, um, depending on how long you want to spend time with that show. So it's saying that for the first episode, um, I would need to study uh, 11 words to get to from 91 to 95%. Um, I would need to study one word, four words, and then it would keep on going through. And it's also going to keep uh, a cumulative total. So it's basically saying that I would need to learn 50 words for this show to reach 95% readability um, in the entire show while limiting myself to the 10,000 most common words. 
So maybe I don't want to limit myself, though, um, to just uh, any point on the Netflix readings list. Maybe I just want to learn the most common words inside that specific show that I'm going on. So in that case, I would set my minimum master frequency list to zero. And uh, clearly, 95% is a little bit low for me on this. So I'm going to go ahead and just up that up to 98%. Um, give that a try and see how many morphs that gives me. Go ahead and hit analyze. Cool. And that's saying that I would need to learn 202 words uh, to get through this show to go from the level that I'm already at, my own readability, to get up to a readability level of 98% on each episode, right? And it, go ahead, it tells me how many words I should learn per episode, right? So um, just to give you guys an example of how this works and um, some things that you can play around with, say I still want a goal of 98%, but I do want to limit myself on the Netflix frequency list. Now, if I type in 490 to limit myself to the most 10,000 common words and analyze it, should give me what I'm looking for. Yep, so you'll notice that my goal was 98% on my new more fan readability, but for a lot of these episodes, I can't get to 98%. In fact, none of them. Um, and that's because with the 10,000 most common words, I just can't physically get to 98% readability with the uh, with this show specifically. Now, different shows are going to be set up different ways. Uh, there are definitely some shows out there that if you limit yourself to the top 15,000, 10,000 words in Japanese, um, you can get to as high as 98%. Um, because those shows have so many common words in them, right? And that's kind of another way to judge how many common words are in a show. Um, so sometimes what I like to do is I will study a show and I'll set my minimum master frequency list um, to either zero or one, and I'll set it to 98, and I'll analyze it, and then I'll study all the words that I need to learn on that show up to that point, so 202 words for this. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and I will go ahead and study the most common words up to the highest percentage that I can. So if I set it to 256, if you look at this frequency list here, and I set it um, um, 256, I believe, for this current frequency list, will take me to uh, the 15,000 most common words. Go ahead and double check it, just to make sure I'm not talking out of my ass. Cool, yep, so if you see, I wanna learn uh, the most 15,000 most common Japanese words only, so just the top ones, then I'd set it to 256, which would really take me up to what is that? 15,017, because these are all 256, but no big deal, right? Um, now, what I'll do is, after I've studied the show once through, uh, with learning all of the morphs that I possibly can, up to 90, 95, 98%, what I'll do is I'll set it to whatever word that I want to learn for the most common. Maybe I want to learn the 15,000 most common words or the 10,000 most common words, right? And then set this target to 100%. Now I know that I'm not going to be able to get to 100% in my new Morphman readability, but this is still a really helpful way where you can make sure that you go back and you learn all of the most common words in that show, right? And in this case, if I were to start that right now, I would have 164 words to learn from this show um, that uh, would allow me to learn as much as I possibly could, right? Um, and to give you an example, I'll stop using my own known database and I'll use a database that is comprised of if somebody had t studied Tango N5, N4, and N3, and then went on to uh, doing a deep dive or using Morphman, right? Go ahead and analyze that. Now you can see that there are a lot of words for me to learn in this show. Um, I'm starting with a pretty low readability on a lot of these episodes, and uh, you know, keep in mind that these, uh, this readability is cumulative, right? So it's assuming that I've learned the, all the morphs from the show pre or from the episode previously. Um, so it's saying that I would have to learn 648 words. So for me, that would be almost 65 days because I usually learn 10 new words a day. Um, and it would definitely not get me to a target of 100%, but I could get to about 95% on each episode. So maybe that's a good goal for me to set, and I set myself to 95%. Go ahead and analyze. And this is a great way to determine how many words you should be learning, and that's about 549 words. Um, I might say that that's a little bit long of a deep dive for me. Usually I don't like to dive a show for more than a month, but this is a great way to set it up and kind of like feel out how you feel about a show. Cool. Um, so some of the other questions that you might have is um, after you've set up this deep dive and you start studying uh, different episodes, um, all you're going to do is, of course, you're going to have to go through your daily reps. You should have a big sub to SRS dump, um, and you can throw whatever shows you want in there. Um, you don't necessarily have to study those words that um, MorphMed is outputting from the show that you are deep diving. While that's helpful, sometimes you can't find an I plus one sentence, right? So it's better to go into MorphMed and use um, the sentences that it's providing.
right? So um, you can choose what sentences uh, are available. If you have a new card and it pops up, you can go ahead and hit L and it'll show you all the available options for that word in I plus one sentences. And that's a great way to start. Um, the other questions that I've been getting are how often should you watch the material that you're deep diving? And that's really more of a personal choice. Um, for me personally, I can't watch a show endlessly until um, I understand it, right? So when we're going through uh, a show, um, it's going to go episode by episode. Morphman is going to show you words automatically from the first episode. Um, so for me, right, if I'm going up to 490, 95%, saying that I need to learn 11 words for the first episode to go from 91% to 95%. So if I learn, it's Morphman is going to do its very best to show me these 11 words first before it goes and shows me the one word from episode two. Now, it might not be able to do that depending on the availability of I plus one words in your sentence bank. So that's why it's a good idea to have a larger sentence bank, and that's why sometimes it's perfectly fine to study words from... Um, a show that you're not deep diving, right? So maybe you're studying a Gretzko, but you have, I don't know, Shirakuma Cafe also loaded up into your sentence bank. Um, and you don't have an I plus one for a Gretzko, uh, I plus one sentence prepared for a Gretzko because there's just not one available for the word that Morphman wants you to learn. Um, but you do have one in Shirakuma Cafe. Go ahead and use the one from Shirakuma Cafe. Um, as far as watching the show, though, I can't personally watch a show endlessly, and I don't necessarily think that's the best way to go about it. So what I typically would do is I might watch the show first um, in total, um, if I like, or first 10 episodes or so, um, and just go through an episode and just kind of enjoy myself and immerse with it. And, you know, it's, uh, if it's a newer show for me, and uh, especially if you're still a beginner, that show's going to be really hard, and that's okay. Um, but what I'll do afterwards, though, is once I've studied the show for a little while, once I've learned all the morphs that I need to learn, all the words that I need to learn in episode one, um, and it goes down to zero, or there's only like one or two left or so, um, then I will rewatch that episode. Um, and maybe I'll watch it with the Japanese subtitles on. Maybe I'll watch it in a program like Voracious, uh, which allows you to click on the words in um, your subtitle so that you can get like a pop-up dictionary with it. Or maybe I can watch it on that uh, the thing I showed you guys before, the Learn uh, Netflix, uh, Learn Language with Netflix add-on. Um, and I'll rewatch the episode, and I will try my very best to pick up on the words that I've learned. And of course, obviously, the entire show. Um, and then I'll do that episode by episode as I go through. So every time I get through all the morphs that I need to learn for that episode, or almost all of them, then I'll watch the episode again. All right, guys, that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the Discord. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of anybody. Um, there are a lot of great and helpful people over there, and you can reach out to uh, me or Nuke Marine, and hopefully we can give you guys the best of answers. All right, that's going to be it for now. Thanks.